<laughs> You're just glitching in the floor. <laughs> Until recently, I had never played a single co-op horror game with friends. I was always a solo survivor. However, the thought of my friends screaming in a horror game warms my heart. Yet this raises an interesting question. Are horror games truly meant to be played alone? Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and we'll be diving into this topic. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy. Enjoy the show! <laughs> Horror games have a unique way of leaving me both shaken and stirred, making me sleep with the lights on and clutching my blanket for comfort even in my 20s. I shouldn't have taken your class! <laughs> For instance, I recently revisited the Resident Evil 2 remake, and ever since, I've been plagued by nightmares of Mr. X, that Fedora Man haunts my dreams to this day. Solo games like Resident Evil, Madison, Layers of Fear, and Little Nightmares excel at instilling a deep-seated fear of the unknown, of things lurking just out of sight. Games like these bring Stephen King's three types of fear to life, revulsion, the fear and disgust of something twisted, horror, confrontation with the unnatural, and terror, fear induced by imagination. These games masterfully manipulate those fears, creating an unsettling atmosphere that keeps you on edge, imagining threats that may not even be there. But what about multiplayer horror games? It's challenging to instill true terror in players when they're not alone. Many of these games aren't even that scary. So how do you take a genre designed to make you feel isolated and alone? and throw Eddie into the mix. Wouldn't adding another friend dilute the horror in a co-op game? To me, the essence of horror games is to make the players feel vulnerable, and having a friend along often acts as a safety blanket, diminishing that sense of vulnerability and making the game less scary. However, co-op horror games can still deliver a compelling experience, offering a unique blend of fear and fun, creating moments that are both terrifying and hilarious. While the dynamic changes, co-op games manage to captivate you differently. To show you an example, I've partnered with Stoic Entertainment to dive into one of my first co-op horror experiences in a game called Spectral Scream. This online co-op horror game allows you to play alone or with up to three other masked players to enter purgatory, the eerie space between the living and the dead. The plot and trailer alone convinced me to try the game, so I brought my amigos along for the ride. Pixie, Blaze, and Bunny. After all, why quake alone when we can quake together in the dark? Wait a minute. Now let's compare this game to other co-op experiences in terms of how fear is delivered. One way Spectral Scream delivers the scary is the amount of bugs per mask. The walls and floors just love me too much. Kidding. I'm sinking through the floor. At least it can't kill me. I'll just do the job myself. Yeah. It doesn't know what to do, it's just standing in one spot. You're getting lower and lower <laughs> through the floor! Pixie, I don't think I'm going to purgatory, I think my character's going to hell. Spectral Scream excels in delivering fear by creating the illusion of a vast map, leading you to feel like you're endlessly circling, teetering on the edge of sanity. It adopts a formula reminiscent of Slenderman, running around and collecting items to escape. This unwittingly draws you and your teammates into interactions with lurking monsters awaiting in the shadows. Co-op horror games like Backrooms, Lethal Company, Phasmophobia, Outlast Trials, and Labyrinthine each have their own chilling methods of instilling fear by isolating you from your team. Take Spectral Scream for instance, if you and your teammates have as little sense of direction as we do, you'll find yourselves naturally splitting up. Oh, it's a ghost, it's a ghost! <laughs> <laughs> Which direction is she going? Oh, she saw me. She saw me. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. No! <laughs> oh, I can hear her! <laughs> I closed the door and she went straight through it! <laughs> She's a ghost pixie. <laughs> A 
great co-op horror game also incorporates proximity chat, distorting you and your teammates' voices, intensifying the immersion, amplifying the experience, and attracting monsters to your location. While playing with friends may offer a sense of security, the true horror lies in the moment when a monster attacks your friends, separates you, and leaves you clueless about their whereabouts or your friends. It's a terrifying experience that compels you to turn corners cautiously and glance over your shoulder in fear. Although it's impossible to get creeped out on a four-way Discord call, the knowledge that monsters can hear you in-game is enough to send shivers down your spine. And I found that Spectral Scream also had this, because I forgot to turn voice chat off. Let's just say, the creatures weren't very fond of my voice. So they were, we're both almost dying? <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> Now let's talk about the significance of humor in co-op horror games, a factor often overlooked in their evaluation. It's easy to miss, but even in the midst of terrifying moments, the ability to goof off and share a laugh with your friends is crucial. A game may be frightening, but if it doesn't allow for moments of levity and silliness, it may fall flat. The best horror games have the power to tickle your funny bone while simultaneously gnawing at your nerves, creating a roller coaster of emotions that might even leave you needing a quick pep talk to regain your composure. When it comes to games like Dying Light, the fear of being overwhelmed by the undead is palpable. When you're alone, the unease of not knowing what lurks around the corner, especially since virals and infected can climb, adds to the tension. But in multiplayer, this survival action horror game takes on a new dimension. It becomes a comedy. Here are some highlights from my in-game adventures with 80s kid grown up. As we navigate the treacherous streets of Haran. <laughs> He's like, stop it, I'm gonna tell. <laughs> so you just have to press it once, you have to press it once, but just at the right time. Co-op horror games bring humor through the freedom to goof off while fleeing from monsters. Phasmophobia expertly blends funny and scary elements as you wait for the ghost haunting the location to approach, and your friend lessens the tension with random comments. Lethal Company places you and your friends on a salvage ship, where you venture into massive superstructures to retrieve junk. Failure to meet the quota results in all of you meeting your maker together. In Bigfoot, another player or AI takes on the role of Bigfoot, hunting you down. Forewarned players who die can return as mummies to help or troll their fellow players. In Pacify, you can watch your friend shrink into doll size by a ghost, prompting a rescue mission. And in Sons of the Forest, from running away from cannibals, you end up rationing the cannibals with your friends. But in Spectral Scream, despite evading monsters and identifying them, the game still delivers comedic moments like figuring out what an EMF reader does, or watching a teammate carry our lifeless body after we die. It's a little bit cold in here. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll run and <laughs> we even have our own dance emote and our characters look very silly. Let's go! The ghosts did not like our dancing, by the way. I'll save you. <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. No, <laughs> While co-op games captivate in different ways, they often lack the sheer terror of solo horror games, like PT, which leaves you more inclined to pee yourself than laugh. Yet, if multiplayer horror games incorporated more unexpected scares, they may have a similar horror feel as solo games. Currently, jump scares in multiplayer could be predictable sometimes, like knowing when brother gets stabby in Spectral Scream. However, here comes the answer to my question. Are horror games meant to be enjoyed alone. I'd find that multiplayer and solo horror games tend to have players enjoy them differently. But despite this, I do think horror games are best enjoyed with friends for the added humor and camaraderie they bring to the experience. So what do you think? Should horror games be enjoyed alone or with friends? Tell me about one of your favorite co-op horror experience in the comments below. I've recently been exposed to co-op gaming, so feel free to provide recommendations on what co-op games 
games you would want me to try. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. And feel free to also check out the YouTube and Twitch pages of these wonderful people. Thank you for watching and that's all. <laughs>